I'm Elise Bowman, the voice of Pan, and I am with Sunny Street. And I'm the voice of Krillin, and also Gero, Gero, Gero. <laughs> That's right. And we are here on Anime Adventures, and this is a show where I have conversations with other anime voice actors. And that's what we're going to do, so stay tuned. Okay, so we're here at Dallas Comic Show. I am so excited to visit with you, Sunny. Sunny, of course you know him as an anime voice actor, but you're a comic artist, you're a teacher, you have directed so many things. I mean, here is like a bundle of talent sitting beside me. A but... bundle of talent. That's <laughs> on my business card, Sunny Straight Bundle of bundle Talent. Bundle of talent, yeah, yeah, I've seen it. It's, it's right here. If you'd here. like a bundle, write to. <laughs> But let's talk anime first. Let's talk Dragon Ball because, okay. I mean, we were on a show together. That's right, we were. Yes, yeah, yeah. so we should do a little like Pan and Giru. Okay. Giru? Yes, Pan, what do you want? Giru, Giru. <laughs> <laughs> and there you have it. But That's I'm the fine. end of our scene. That's the end. And scene. <laughs> So um, you got started, you've, you directed and voice acted on many Dragon Ball series. Yeah, and I've directed a lot of shows actually in Funimation. Yeah. Um, Chris Sabat was the first one after, our, we had, well we had um, Barry Watson was our first director. Yes, he was my director when and I he started. He was the only director for a long time. And then when they added another director, they moved Chris Sabat from assistant director to director. Mm -hmm. And he did that for a couple of years and then I believe he brought in Mike McFarlane, and then two months later he brought in me. And then years progressed, we got we have tons of directors now. Yeah, there are a ton of directors now. Yeah. So how long did you direct total? Uh, initially, I think I directed for like four years, and then I took a break from directing because I, I got a, a books, a graphic novel published from Tokyo Pop. Yeah. And that took a few years of my life to do that. And then uh, about four years ago, they asked me to come back and direct, and so I directed for another three years then. And then now I'm back doing comics again, so I had to stop directing as well. That's so crazy. That seems and to be my cycle. It's like direct, draw, direct, draw, direct, draw. <laughs> but that's a pretty cool cycle. I imagine it keeps it really interesting. Yeah, I, I like anything to do with art. Okay, and I do want to come back to the graphic novels, okay. but I want to talk about Krillin okay. first. Right. And we've talked very briefly about Giru on GT. Yeah. So Krillin, you voiced that character for a long time. Let's hear a little Krillin. Okay, here's a little Krillin. No, that's actually an adult Krillin. A little Krillin will be like this. Oh, I love it. Come yummy ha! Come yummy ha! Uh, actually, Lori Steele does Little Krillin, I, I and it sounds very similar to that. It does. It was okay. weird too because I first heard her voice and I went, "Wow, that really does sound like my Krillin young, right? That's a really good job." And she said, "Well, to be honest, I never even heard yours. They just really? said he's kind of scratchy and it sounds like a little kid." And so she just came up with a voice, but it really does sound like a junior version of what I did. You know, I talked to her on an episode, and it is crazy to hear the similarities. I yeah. didn't realize she hadn't heard yours. Yeah, she just came up with a voice, apparently. Really? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. But I love doing Krillin. Krillin, um, people love you because I also play Bardock, which is Goku's dad. Yes. And I remember one guy said on Facebook, says, does it, does it bother you that Goku, I mean, uh, Bardock is such a bad... He never gets the screen time. Whereas Krillin, who gets his butt kicked all the time, he, he gets all the screen time. And I went, yeah. no, because while well, it's fun playing the, the, the you know the bad guy, he's like, yeah, you know, he's all yeah. beefy and everything. But they tend to stay on one level, you know. Whereas Krillin, he gets angry, he gets scared, mm -hmm. he gets in love. I mean, he runs the gamut of emotion. So that as an actor, that's what you want to play. Also, as an actor, you love doing death scenes, and he dies four times. Four it's like times. a soap opera, and he comes the back. The first time he died, though, mm -hmm. I thought that was the end of my career because it was the only character ah. I had. And Chris Sabat was like, uh, "Sorry, but uh, looks like your character's gonna die." Oh no! It's like it was a good character. It's a good run. Sorry, but he didn't know because at the time, we were just getting little bits of information and directing it as it came along, and then. He calls me about a month later and goes, uh, yeah, apparently there's these things called the Dragon Balls and you get to be wished back to life. And I was like, oh, good. And then he died again. And then I was like, sad. And then he came back again. And then he died. And I was like, I hey, forget it. He's going to be back always. <laughs> That's awesome. 
Well, let's talk about Bardock, and this is interesting because uh, at Comeacon last year, yeah. I did a panel with you and Damien. Yeah. They are hilarious, and Damien's hilarious. Both of you are hilarious. You were like a little stand-up duo, <laughs> <laughs> and you also gave me a hard time. I had a spreadsheet that was color coded. Yes. You guys busted me on it and showed the world. I think Damien was the one to hand it. Well, I'll show you this now. Up. I had to write down Dallas Comic Show because she never knows where she is. <laughs> okay, so you're busting me again. Yeah. I mean, this is her cheat sheet. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> but I loved hearing on the panel, that, and I moderated and just witnessed their genius. You guys did bring up some good points about your character, so tell me some interesting things about Bardock and some questions that you always get about that character. Well, Bardock, you know, he originally appeared in a, a movie. Mm -hmm. It was called the Bardock movie, and, and uh, it wasn't created by Akira Toriyama. It was one of the few characters that he did not create, but he really liked the character, so... He actually included him in the manga later, and now when they made the, the Broly movie, he wanted to bring in Bardock, but he wanted to bring him in as if it was his character. So he basically uh, retooled the whole character and his, his background and changed his history. He's a much, he's a kinder, gentler Bardock. He's still tough, you know, mm -hmm. but he's just not as aggressive as he used to be. He's now a family man. It's actually, what I said, it's like, because for years in the video games he would appear, mm -hmm. and in the video games he would always say, I'm going to change the future, right? Well, he actually ended up changing the future uh, because he now gets the life that he really wanted in the original movie. So, in a way, he's the most powerful Saiyan of all. Ooh. Yeah. Deep thoughts. Should I say that to camera one? He's oh, the most yeah. powerful Saiyan of all. Yeah. You got that, camera two? Camera one, camera two. All right, we're on. <laughs> like those deep thoughts by yeah. Sunny Strait. Yeah, that one deep thought, and that's it. So I oh. hope you were paying attention. Okay, no yeah. more deep thoughts no, that's the rest the of, of the time. That's if it's all surface from here on. Okay, yeah. good to know. All chit chat it's from here on out. It's all the candy coating. Yes. Yes. Okay, good. I'll make a note no of that. No chocolate. <laughs> no nugget. Oh, no. But we must. All right, we'll dig deeper. Okay. Well, let's talk about some other characters, and we're going to cut to your nice little poster at some point where you've got some of your awesome characters. Well, let's see what's characters. on the list here. We had <laughs> Krillin first, and then we uh -huh. have Full Metal Alchemist Maze oh, Hughes. Yes. Full Metal Alchemist Maze Hughes is responsible for me playing mm -hmm. a lot of dads in anime. Oh, really? Because he's like the ultimate dad, uh -huh. and then from then on, if there was a dad, they would call me in to play it. And I've, you got the dad. I've played so many dads, especially if the dad has glasses. Then it was really? like, isn't that funny? Yeah, it's always sunny straight for the yeah. Because they say in voice acting, it's not like you're you're not typecast or anything, but it sounds like once no, you have a dad, it, that's all lies. You've got, it's full, they're full of lies. We, they, it, we <laughs> have so many here. people now in our stable of actors that yeah. I think that they just typecast everything now. That's it's funny. like, hey, that kind of looks like Sunny. I just played a guy last week. I can't announce it yet. Oh, okay. I'll be back announce it tomorrow. Okay. But um, it, it was a show for Cliff. And Clifford uh, had this cast me because it looks just like me. Seriously? I looked at the character and I said, I wonder why you cast me as this. This That's fat guy with glasses and a goatee. <laughs> it's totally me. How dare you? This, I said, this looks so much like me, I'm insulted. That's so funny because I've heard that before. J. Michael Tatum, when I talked with him, yeah. he was like, there's a character and I feel like I got cast because I, looked, I, look, like I look like him. Now, so I did cast somebody that. in a Lupin movie years uh -huh. ago. It was Damien, actually. Oh, really? And I said, this guy looks just like Damien. I'm going to cast it, cast him in. And he goes, oh, that's a really great way to cast things, Sonny. He's like, cast him because it looks like him. And I was like, yeah, but if you have that physicality, you probably will sound the same. Yeah. That's yeah. interesting. Yeah. Things that people don't know. See, there's another deep nugget. Yeah. So you lied. You did all give it's other all deep casting. nuggets. It's all typecasting. All typecasting. Yeah. Okay. Good to So know. if you think that you're an anime type, like, I'm saying this to both cameras because I want this okay. to get through. Now, if you think you're an anime type of person, you should you should become a voice actor because you can get typecast. If you look like an anime character, get into the business. Okay, so if you've got big eyes, yeah, if you've got really big eyes, big? if you have purple hair that sticks out to here, oh, it's a, it's a boon. Or if you your hair changes colors, yeah. if your uh, proportion size is five heads tall, that's generally a good anime cartoon size. Okay, I so yeah, take if, notes. If, of course, if you do look like that. It's going to be kind of freaky when you see you walking down the street, I'm going to have to say. But you'll have a job. But you'll be cast right away. Yeah. <laughs> there is a job for you, big anime head person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Okay, let's talk that about was another Macy's. character. Let's see what we got. Yeah. Uh, Who else do you have? Usopp from One Piece. Yes. Oh, that's a good one. Yes. Now, a lot of people, I get really mad at them because they say, Why? oh, Usopp sounds just like Krillin. And that is a lie. So let's hear it. Because Krillin talks like this, okay. right? Uh -huh. But Usopp talks like this. So it's like Krillin with that hitch in his voice. Mm -hmm. And the hitch is so painful, I need to get more credit for that pain. Oh, you should. Yeah, really. And oh. he screams every line. Oh, he does. I don't know why. It's like, even if he's just having a conversation, being, hey, so um, anyway, let's go down this, you know, it's like <laughs> right there. Stop yelling, Usopp. Please, Usopp, stop yelling. Stop, yeah. just stop. Stop with the yelling. But he's <laughs> one of my favorite players. You know, actually, uh, he became my favorite character to play on one episode, and I thought he was just comic relief for the most part. But he be, he gets really sad and angry because he gets all this money stolen from him, and it's the money that the whole crew had. And it's because he feels that he's weaker than everyone else, and he just starts crying. And as he was doing, the, I was doing the scene. I had tears coming down my face, and I was like, I've never cried from anime before. And so wow. he became my favorite character until this character. But we'll get to that one later. Until that character yeah. is he on your board, or can we skip ahead? Yeah, I, I think. Let me see. Assassination classroom. We can yes. skip ahead. He's next. Oh, he's next. Yeah. Oh, good. Okay. So My favorite character of all time, Koro Sensei from really? Assassination Classroom. And so what makes him your favorite character? Now, first of all, he doesn't talk like this. <laughs> <You're> <laughs> he like, rarely screams. Rest. He yes. rarely screams. It's usually just my own voice, just a little bit more smarmy, like in this area. Uh -huh. uh, so it's very easy to do. But also, personality-wise, he's very similar to me. Really? How so? Uh, he's, 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 he's a little over the top, uh -huh. he's a little wacky, uh, he's a teacher, oh. uh, and, and um, when I got cast, I didn't even know I got the part. I was uh, I just showed up for Funimation to work for Joel, uh -huh. and this is a, this is another thing about the, at Funimation, they do all the time, they don't tell you you're cast and stuff until you show up. <sighs> and I show up and I said, oh yeah, I've heard of the show, what character am I playing? He goes, the lead. I went, I would have done some research uh, had you told me this ahead of time. That would have been nice. Yeah, but instantly I related to the character, so it was like I didn't need the research. So now, did I hear somewhere that Kristen McGuire plays your student in this show, and she is your student? Because you yeah. know I've talked with her on Anime Adventures yeah. too. In that, I don't know what her name is, but it's, the, I make fun of it all the time. I always, it's called I say Heine Ho, but I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it really is. So that's like. Yeah. Life and yes. anime kind and of. And I started teaching the week I started playing this character. Did you really? Yeah. And so instantly she was my student in real life in my first wow. class. And I was teaching at the same time. And it was weird too because I would say things and I, uh, as his character and I would go, oh shoot, I just said that in, in my class last week. Deja yeah. Like, yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, definitely life imitating art. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Plus I have tentacles. <laughs> Oh, in here? No, in real life. Oh, in real life. Oh, <laughs> that's what I would, they were invisible and I would just be like. <laughs> yeah. So do we have more characters to cover before we uh, talk about well, your Well, I other... played Toonami Tom, the first Toonami Tom for Cartoon oh, Network. Oh, that's right. That was the role. I, I had Krillin, but you know mm -hmm. Krillin's a part-time job because he dies all the time. <laughs> so I had I didn't think didn't take this seriously. I just thought it'd be mm -hmm. fun to do. But then um, Cartoon Network really liked what I did with Krillin and asked me to audition for Toonami Tom. Oh, and wow. then I, I got that part. And when I got that, I was like, oh, I've stumbled onto a career. You know, and then it was like, it sort of took over my life. Wow. So that was, it's very, it was a monumental role for me. So is that really how you started voice acting? Yeah. Was Krillin and then Toonami Tom? Krillin and Toonami Tom. Yeah. Really? So how did you get Krillin in the first place then? I just auditioned. They had a, a general audition and. Uh, actually, a friend of mine was friends with Chris Sabat. She auditioned, mm -hmm. but she didn't get a role, but she told me about it. She said, you need to audition for this. They're looking for character actors. And that's what I was known to in, in the theater scene in Dallas. Oh, so, okay. So, so okay, I'll just give it a shot. You think that was dangerous? Are you kidding me? You just robbed a bank! So we've talked anime. Mm -hmm. You also, he's an amazing artist. Oh my gosh, and I've only seen like bits and pieces of your work. I haven't even seen a ton of your work, but let's talk about being a well, I, comic I, artist. Is that what you call it? Yeah, Graphic I was novelist? actually a comic book artist uh, before I was a voice actor. Okay. And uh, I was a, a theater. I was theater major in college. Oh yeah, you kind of mentioned that. Then years later, um, I'm on Dragon Ball Z, mm -hmm. and I'm at Comic Con, and we're there signing for Dragon. And I'd been there as an artist, a self-publisher oh, actually. Oh really? Yeah. 
and Wendy Petey, the creator of ElfQuest, which I was a fan of since high school, she was there and she started drawing pictures of our characters. And I went, oh, okay, I'm gonna surprise her because she doesn't know I'm an artist. Uh -huh. And I drew her main character Cutter and gave it to her as a gift. Yes. And she hired me on the spot to draw ElfQuest. Really? Which here's, That's, may I hold this up? Yeah, I drew, I drew that yeah. for their uh, 40th anniversary. And was that this year or when was her? No, that was like two years ago. Two years ago? Yeah. Okay. And um, so, yeah, so then, then I did two 58 page stories in black and white. And then years later, they sold the rights for publishing to uh, Dark Horse, mm -hmm. and Dark Horse uh, wanted her to do another series, which she was calling The Final Quest. And they said, you can have any colors you want. Who do you want? She said, well, I want Sonny Strait. And they said, who's Sonny Strait? She says, he's uh, the voice of Krillin on Dragon Ball Z. And they're like, what? <laughs> they're like, can he color? And she goes, can oh he? yeah, he's really good. She showed, showed him some of my stuff on DeviantArt. And so uh, I was a colorist for four years. Oh, okay. And then Wendy said, you know, she was done. So does a colorist just mean you do the coloring on artwork yeah. that somebody else has done? Well, if you look at this, this is the kind of stuff I did. Okay. Yeah, very Photoshop. Uh, colorists today have to be basically painters, you know. Like in the past, it used to be just flat color. Okay. But now you got to know, you know, color theme and all, all this other stuff. Uh, stuff ah. to, to actually do this but okay but it was fun although I always preferred elf quest in black and white really yeah and I always I always preferred elf quest that was drawn by Wendy and no one else yeah so I am an elf quest artist who only wants Wendy to do it <laughs> and I'm an elf quest colorist who wants to see it in black and white so and, <laughs> you're like what? right What's well they, going on here they have a new story now though and they wanted they wanted me to uh, color it and draw it Really? So, yeah, so what we're doing is I talked to Wendy to do in the layouts, mm -hmm. which is where they just sort of lay out the page, you know? And so she's doing the layouts, and I'm drawing over her layouts, making it, uh, finishing it, the art, and then coloring it too. Yeah. So, how much time does that take? Like, I can't imagine. Well, luckily it's a bi monthly book, so we don't have to come out every month. Oh, okay. So it, and we usually use up that two months to do it. Yeah, I remember being at a convention with you, and we were all going to eat, and you actually were staying to work on something. I don't know if it was a commission Elf or something. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Elf I think it was. I, I thought it was ElfQuest. I think it was coloring ElfQuest. Yeah, yeah. I think you were working on that. Yeah. That's so cool. Well, the other thing that you do is you teach. Yep. Um, and you teach anime voiceover acting, right? So tell us about teaching. I teach in my studio, Sunny mm -hmm. Straight Studios. Yeah, you have a studio. It's in uh, Denton, Texas. Uh -huh. I teach several classes. The basic class is a, a dubbing class. But I noticed that a lot of people who come in here don't have any kind of training at all. So I spend the first two days teaching basics of acting. Yeah, nice. But I also, like I get, I get students of all levels. Like I have like people who have actually done professional work who will take this class. So what I'll, I'll just work on whatever level they're on. And, and usually it's one person at a time anyway. And then on the third day, I divide the class up into two classes so that we can spend more time on the mic. And we spend, we record a lot of anime and stuff like that. And then I'll take their best recordings and I'll make a demo out of it. And then I'll give them the demo for free. And a lot of my students have been getting work from those demos. Yeah, and you said a lot are working at Funimation, and then you even yeah. had two nominated for... Oh, right. Yeah, Behind the Voice Actors nominated two of my uh, students last year for Best New Voice Actors. That's so cool. Yeah, I said, you guys are really good for advertising. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Keep That's up the good nice. work. Yes. Yeah. So as a teacher who has so much experience, if you had any words of wisdom for those who, because I get asked a lot and people who watch, there are a lot of people who want to get into voice acting or who, like you said, they're doing it, but um, maybe want to build their skills. So do you have any words of wisdom or any recommendations? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of, of voice actors now who are teaching. Mm -hmm. So if I were, if I was in your position, I would take everybody's class. Yes. Um, but not only that, I would get into theater because when you're on stage, you get a sense of timing because the audience is responding to you. Mm -hmm. And if you get enough of that, you understand what it takes to make someone laugh or cry or whatever. And so that's a, to be able to do that instinctively is a real boon in this industry. That's great advice. Yeah. Well, this has been so much fun. Well, thank you, Elise. Yes, I had a great I loved time. It. I think we should say bye in a character voice. Okay, which one? I always go to Krillin. It's the easy go-to. Yeah, well, 
Well, and I'll do you hand. Do, okay. okay. Uh, hand, what should we do? Should we say goodbye to these people? I think we should say goodbye. Okay, I'm not okay. sure how to do it, though. I don't want to hurt their feelings. Uh, well, how about we just say so long? So long. See you later. See you later. Bye. Bye.